In this video, we are talking about how to sell your photography gear high and buy it low so that you can switch systems whenever you want, like how I've shot Fuji for the last two years, and even after using my gear for two whole years, putting a lot of use and abuse into it, I'm able to sell that gear to buy this Sony a7R 2 and I only lost $400. So basically I rented a whole camera system for $400 to use it for two years and now I'm on a more expensive full frame system. So in this video we're going to talk about how to buy low and sell high with photography gear. We're going to go through depreciation curves of, of different camera gear and uh, my favorite actual places, Amazon, eBay, to sell things and how to avoid the fees on there. But before we do that, we have a new camera and it's time to celebrate. So I found a new location in the Really Good Photo Spots app, which will be released on June 5, 2017, as long as we can squash these last couple bugs, in the Apple App Store. It's called Really Good Photo Spots. Anyway, found this location. It's a half mile, extremely steep hike in to get to this spot. And so I drove there the other day and then I flew my drone over to make sure that it's still there, the old buildings and stuff, it, it's there. I have no idea what we're gonna find, but I'm gonna meet up with a couple readers of Improved Photography who live here in Boise and hopefully we'll get something cool. Let's go. All right, we made it to the mine. This place is incredible. This uh, place was built in the 1800s and then was finally abandoned in 1960, I think. And it's so cool. There's still old machinery in here. Uh, this is just a <laughs> amazing, amazing place. I've lived in Boise most of my life and I've never, never even heard of this place. All right, I'm ready to start shooting now. I've set up actually two tripods. One with my Sony a7R 2 and this other one with the Fuji X-Pro2. Since I'm selling the X-Pro2 and I just bought the a7R 2 I thought, eh, I'm just gonna bring them both and kind of compare. The Fuji is shooting a 1.4 lens and the Sony, all I have is an F4 lens, my 16 to 35. So it's gonna be a little bit tough to pull something out with the Sony, but we'll see what we can do. Kind of got my everything set. Uh, once I got my composition set, I'm just going to shoot, 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 shoot. And then we're going to do a little bit of light painting on the building, put some flashes in there, and we'll get different things, and then I can just mask them together. That was cool. I was up until 4 o'clock in the morning that day, so I've slept in a little bit. And now let's talk about some of the nuts and bolts here. So you want to sell your gear low, high, and buy low. Well, here's a real life example of this. My sister-in-law, well, that's the back of her head, but she has a front of her head too. <laughs> um, she is a real estate photographer and she came over for a few days last week to visit us. And when she did, she told me that she was feeling really frustrated and stuck with her gear. And we went out and did an example, a real estate photography shoot and Really, her camera was kind of holding her back. She didn't have the greatest lenses for it, uh, and it, it was it was tough to do. So this this is a listing of all the gear that she had, yeah. and we went through one by one to see what she had. She felt like it was an older gear, you know, it was an XT1, a generation old, an Icon D3200, a lot of older gear, and she doesn't even use all of it. So I said, well, let's sell it all and you can end up with this, like the ultimate real estate photography setup. She gets a sweet tilt shift lens, gets the nice photo, um, giant flash uh, to use for real estate, and she's gonna pocket a couple hundred bucks even after taxes and fees. So let's talk about how to do it. First thing before you ever buy or sell photo gear is important to understand this graph. It's an F S curve, not that S curve, uh, the other photography S curve. It's a reverse S curve. See how it's pretty flat at the beginning. When you buy gear, you know, let's say you're going to buy the A7R 3 when it comes out in a few months. Well, the first, the first year or two of that gear, it's not going to depreciate too much because there's so many people wanting to buy that camera. And if they can get a couple hundred bucks off, they'll buy a used one. And so it doesn't depreciate much. But if you hold on to it too long and the new version gets released and it's starting to look old, there's something better out there, steep depreciation for a while. 
and that depreciation means you're losing money. If you want to be switching systems and buying gear without losing tons of money, you cannot be holding on to the gear. The baby's in here. <laughs> you cannot be holding on to the gear when it's in this part of the curve. And then it starts to flatten out at the end. You know, a Nikon D3200 is still a usable camera. Some people are still going to be happy to have that camera. So it's going to last quite a bit of time where it just kind of flattens off at the end. So the idea is buy gear here if you don't mind using older gear. Buy gear or keep gear here. Don't own gear here. All right. So those, those are some examples of recent full frame cameras. So let's say you want to look through your gear and see what your ultimate dream is going to be. Say, man, if I could, if there were any way I weren't stuck in a camera system, I'd love to switch to mirrorless, switch to Sony, whatever. This is just for fun. Obviously, a camera is just a tool, uh, but sometimes it does become significant. And the worst thing is when you feel stuck, when you feel like your gear is holding you back, then it probably will, but it's mostly upstairs and not necessarily the gear. So go through all of your gear, everything, every gel you have, every cable release you have, every extra battery, and put it in Excel. This is my Excel sheet that I made uh, when I was considering a switch to Sony. And I listed absolutely everything. Don't forget the, uh, the stuff like that old cheapy $40 tripod you bought with your first camera, uh, that tiny little Canon camera bag that you got with your first uh, Canon Rebel, whatever it is. List everything. Now, not everybody has a ton of photography gear, but you probably have more than you think. And if you don't have enough to get to where you need to be, then go sell an old cell phone that you have lying around. Look through your house and let's have a garage sale. All right, how to get the most money for your gear. This is a, a real key to this. People hold on to the gear during the nasty part of the depreciation curve because they just aren't sure quite how to sell it. The two websites that I use the very most for selling gear and getting the best prices are Amazon and eBay. So on an Amazon listing, a lot of people don't even know, you look to the right hand side about midway down and it has this tiny little link that says have one to sell and you just click that and you can make your listing. Um, the fees are pretty high for selling on Amazon. It's 8.2% on average. It depends on if it's a $2,000 lens or a $50 lens, has different percentage set, etc. And they're pretty transparent. You can see how much the fees are gonna be as you're going through the listing process. So fees are pretty high, you gotta watch out for that. You can't sell everything. This is unfortunate. Amazon lets sellers, um, like they'll allow Sony to say, you know, for this listing, you have to be a certified seller or something like that. So you may find that some pieces of gear, some lenses, whatever, you aren't able to sell on Amazon and that's super frustrating without the pro account. Shipping is going to be cheaper. So if you're selling a larger item, an old desktop computer or something, shipping, if you just go to the post office, could be 50, 60 bucks for a heavy desktop computer. Well, Amazon lets you use their discount. If you sell through Amazon, you can buy your postage there and it's cheap. I mean, what may cost 60 bucks at the post office for a big, heavy uh, camera bag or, or a, a desktop computer, something like that, maybe five, six bucks uh, by using Amazon's shipping. So that saves you some money if you're selling uh, bigger items. Um, and items usually sell really fast on Amazon, as long as it's a popular item. So for selling a Fuji camera, ma a major lens, something like that, I can usually list it today and it'll be sold by this afternoon. I just list, uh, I look at what's currently there um, and I'll sell one dollar cheaper than the cheapest one of the same condition. And usually it sells right away. If you want to wait longer, that's fine um, to see if you can get more. But I usually just go one dollar less and it sells right away and I can be shipping it out. So that's Amazon. Next option is eBay. The real advantage of eBay is that the fees are lower, but they're not as transparent with the fees. So you really have to look at it carefully to know how much you're going to eat, how much is going to be eaten up in fees by selling on eBay. Generally, it's something like 8% of the first $50. Then, you know, let's say it's an $800 item. Then for from $50 to $1,000, then you're paying maybe 5% and then let's say it's a $2,000 lens, then the, from the thousand to 2,000, you're paying 2%. So 
it's a little bit muddy. They're not super uh, clear about their fees in my opinion, so you do have to watch it carefully. But generally eBay fees are less than selling on Amazon. And the fees can really eat your life. Um, you can sell anything. There aren't like restricted categories like on Amazon, uh, except, you know, if you're going to sell like, I don't know, IEDs or something. <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, shipping is more expensive because you're going to have to, you can use their discount, but it's not as good. And items usually take longer to sell, usually in the neighborhood of five days, nine days, etc. And there are tons of scams on eBay, so just make sure the payment actually goes through and wait for the email that says sold, ship now, and then you can sell your item uh, from eBay. Now, the way that I recommend pricing items on eBay is never use an auction. The auction prices are almost always going to earn you less than just listing a buy it now that's reasonable. Most people that list on eBay are listing as an auction, and then uh, they have a buy it now price that's just really hopeful that maybe somebody's just gonna pay this. Um, and usually it's just gonna go for less in the auction. But because most people list the buy it now prices higher as the, oh, maybe somebody would pay this, if you come in with a lower but reasonable buy it now price, it'll usually sell fairly quickly and you'll probably get more than you would have with the auction. My tip for eBay is buy with auctions, sell with buy it now. All right, next is Craigslist and Facebook. This works really well for items that are in the, you know, $400 and less. If you have an, an old Nikon D3200, perfect. Sell it on, on Facebook, uh, on Facebook Marketplace or on, or on Craigslist because there are no fees whatsoever and it's something that will probably have high demand in the local market, you know, just somebody that wants a DSLR. Doesn't have a whole lot of money. Perfect place, just put it up on Craigslist, see if it'll sell. There are no fees, and so you'll save over selling it on uh, Amazon or eBay, something like that. Um, and another nice benefit of selling on Craigslist is you can get mugged and all kinds of things like that. It's awesome. All right, how to get top dollar for your old crap, or I mean your quality used photography gear. First thing is you have to keep the box. Whenever I buy photo gear, I always keep the box. I have a stack of, of uh, boxes of my old lenses and actually, let's come on, come with me. We will go to my garage right now and I'll just show you. So in the garage, I keep the old boxes. It's totally weird. It makes no sense whatsoever. But if you have the, the original packaging and your receipt for items that you, um, that you bought, you usually make $150, $200 more um, just by having that. So you can list it on your sales, say, I still have the original packaging, you know, everything like that. Uh, sorry, my gear is a mess. Uh, but right down there. Uh, these are just a few of my boxes of lenses and stuff. Right now, uh, Jesse has a lot of my stuff because he's selling it off for me. Um, and while we're in the garage, I might as well show you this. Uh, this is my, where I store my photo gear. I like to keep things orderly, otherwise I can't find it. And so like, when I wanna find a lens, oh, come on, come down there. It's right there. All my lenses are right there. You know, when I wanna find all my travel stuff, uh, it's down there, I have all my travel adapters. It's uh, nicely organized that way. Uh, so a tool chest is really handy. Otherwise, it's just kind of bouncing all over the house and stuff. Okay, so keep your receipt and keep your box for things. You're going to get a lot more money when you list it if that's something that you can advertise that you still have that stuff. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know why people pay 100 bucks for the packaging. But on, I mean, you'll often see $150, $200 more just because you kept the packaging. People like to feel like it's they're getting something new even though it's used. And I'll usually tape the receipt from when I bought it to the box. That way I can kind of manage my depreciation of different things and I know how much I, I paid for it. Also helps for taxes to make sure it's there. When you're making your listing, include as many photos as possible and don't make them professional is my tip. 
you know, if I get this, sure, I can pop this in a light tent and make it look awesome, look like a professional photo, but then it's gonna look like a, you know, commercial uh, staged photo. They wanna see everything. They wanna see if there's a little scratch or something. And my tip is in your listing, you should be super thorough. Say exactly what's wrong with it. There's this tiny little scratch here. There's just list everything because then they're gonna feel confident with it and you won't get returns. If you're just totally honest about everything that's there, you're not going to get returns. People are going to be, feel more confident buying from you even if you don't have a high seller rating. You haven't sold a lot of stuff. Um, check your shutter count. Um, I think their website is shuttercount.com. Uh, you can just upload a photo and boom, it'll tell you how many shutter actuations that camera has had. Generally, the number of photos you've actually taken with a camera is probably a lot less than you think it is. Um, often, you know, even if you shoot, shoot pretty high volume, but you don't shoot time lapses or events, that's where you're going to use a lot of sh shutter actuations. If you're just shooting landscapes and stuff, even if you're pretty active, you may only shoot 10,000 frames in a year, maybe 20,000. Uh, even if you're pretty active shooting landscapes. And so uh, just find out what the shutter actuations is because sh or whatever, uh, because people will want to know. Um, and it they they want to know that because they know at 200,000, oh, my shutter's going to burn out and stuff. People always think that means the camera's dead and it's not. It's really only about a $200 fix, $250. It uh, depends on the brand, of course. Um, but shutters you often last much longer than that. It's not something to be afraid of. So just list it. Uh, because it makes it seem, oh man, it only has 20,000 frames on it, um, and people don't realize. Next, put a screen protector on your gear. Um, this, I just bought this one used. Sony screens especially, they really get beat up. I, with my Sony RX105 that I just sold, um, it was like this too, after only a few uses. Uh, the Sony screens are not super durable, but whatever brand you have, just put a screen protector on it because you don't want you don't want any scratches when you sell it. You got to kind of manage that. I'm terrible on gear, horrible on it. Uh, so whatever I can do to protect it, like putting on a screen protector, you just might as well. All right, how to buy low and sell high. Um, you got to manage that depreciation. I'm selling the, or, or I had the Sony RX100 to record YouTube videos. Uh, it was a great camera. I intended to keep it, but whoop, I saw on Sony Alpha rumors that in the next four to six weeks or so, we should be getting a Sony RX100 version six. And so what did I do? Sell that sucker. I don't want to be on the nasty part of the depreciation curve, remember? Um, I want to sell it. And so you say, oh no, now I lost money because I bought it brand new from the store and now I sold it. You know what? I just think of it like renting. I had that camera. I used it heavily for five months. I sold it and I only lost $119. You know, I basically rented a really nice camera for $119 for four months. It's That's not bad. I'm managing my expenses as I go along. If I were to hold it during the bad part of the depreciation curve, it might cost me 600 bucks. Uh, so if you're if you're just watching this kind of thing, and you sell at the right times, you aren't gonna lose that much money. Uh, gear just won't cost you thousands and thousands of dollars over the year. But if you hold too long, it will. All right. If you are going to buy sticker price, the prices are usually fixed. You know they're gonna have the lowest advertised price uh, by the camera manufacturers, which is total price fixing. I don't know why the government allows them to get rid of that, uh, to get away with that. But um, basically, I, what I would say is just avoid tax if you can. I mean, Amazon collects tax everywhere now. Uh, so consider B&H or Jet or wherever uh, else you can buy. Consider if, if that could save you, you know, 6% of your, of your cost. Oh, if you're buying used on Amazon, which I totally recommend. I love to buy used gear if I can. If you're buying used, Make sure it's an item that's prime eligible. Um, if something's just way low and it's not prime eligible, there are some scams in there where you'll buy it and then they'll send you an email and say, oh, the problem payment didn't go through, pay us through PayPal, wherever. Uh, just be aware of the scams like that. I like buying things that are prime eligible because then you get the Amazon return policy, all that kind of stuff. All right, now the next thing that I wanna say is you don't have to only buy used. If something is available used, I'm buying it used. 
but um, but you don't have to. I mean, I bought the Sony A7R II and, and this lens. I just also pre-ordered the new 16 to 35 lens. And when the A7R III comes out, I'm gonna buy that too. I would love to have that. So, uh, you know, having switching gear and stuff, this whole method doesn't mean you have to only use used gear. It's just a matter of thinking about the depreciation curve and buying it at the right times and selling it at the right times. So a couple tips to reduce switching costs. Don't use the Nikon or Canon flash system. Otherwise, if you want to switch, man, now you got to sell all that other gear too and lose some in that as well. So if you can use the Yongnuo flash system or whatever other brand you want to use, do that because then it'll allow you to switch between uh, different camera brands. Buy bigger filters than what you need on your current lens. You know, you're shooting a, a Fuji camera, maybe a 52 millimeter lens, well maybe. Get the 82 millimeter, what I just got from Breakthrough Photography, great company. Um, buy the 82 millimeter and step down rings. And then whenever you switch between brands and they have a different filter size for your wide angle lens, you are set. Embrace the Trinity. If you shoot the Trinity of lenses, the 16 to 35, 24 to 70, 70 to 200, or whatever the equivalents are on your brand, you save a ton of money. Because if you're gonna have like this little, uh, this one uh, prime lens for this one situation and this specialty lens and that specialty lenses, you're just more stuff depreciating for you and it's harder to manage. Uh, a lot more stuff to sell when you switch. So if you can embrace the Trinity and just get the Trinity of lenses, really makes this a lot easier to do. Uh, consider adapters, you know, if you're all on Canon or all on Nikon right now and you wanna to switch to Sony, consider just using your same lenses and buying a Metabones adapter. Now, the next one is big for me because I do have gear acquisition sy syndrome. I always, always, always force myself to write with a pen and paper. <laughs> I write with a pen. I had to write, I wrote this out. It just felt like something you should do on paper. I don't know why. I use a pen like every four months. It's so rare that I even touch a pen. Anyway, um, I wrote out my pros and cons list for uh, the Sony system compared to the Fuji system. And I always force myself when I buy a new piece of gear to sit down and really think about it because it gets emotional. We say, oh, I have to shoot this new Pentax medium format, whatever, and you have to go get it. It seems like, yes, that's gonna improve my photos. Actually sit down and think about it like what actual benefits is it going to do for you other than, man, that looks cool right now. Um, and when you sit down and you make this list, many times, I bet 10 different times I've said, okay, I've got to buy this thing. I sat down and made, made the list and actually I was like, hmm, actually it's not that great. It doesn't really fit my needs. Maybe I should just not sell this and instead go buy a trip to go do some photography, etc. So that's one thing that has definitely helped. Well, this, uh, this video hopefully will point you in the right direction, but I have a really in-depth article on improvephotography.com with all the numbers of what the fees are on eBay and, and Amazon and the links to shutter count and, and all that kind of stuff. It's at improvephotography.com slash sell gear. Improvephotography.com slash sell gear. Just go check out the article, bookmark that thing, and then you'll have it for when you want to uh, to uh, sell old gear. It's kind of a step-by-step -step guide uh, to managing your gear and not losing a ton of money. Obviously, photography is not just about the gear, it's mostly about skill, but it's fun uh, to have the cool new gear and stuff. I, I enjoy it, it's just kind of a part of the hobby for me. And so if that's you too, hopefully this video has been helpful. Hey, give me a thumbs up. It's been a lot of work to uh, create this video. So if you'll give a thumbs up on it, hopefully it'll spread it to some other people. And we'll see you in the next video. See you guys.